Hello everyone, this is Ace Stocky here and welcome to another tutorial. This time the Technic Pack has updated to uh, TechIt version 3. So what this is going to be is in a quick install tutorial on how to install the latest version which is 3.0.4 but it should apply to pretty much everything for version 3. Most important thing to note is it says back up your world but basically what will happen is if you currently have a TechIt server that's running TechIt 2 you'll pretty much need to get rid of it because the mods have changed enough to make it basically just impossible to do but here is how you you just click here and then it'll ask you where you want to save it I'll just save it to my Minecraft folder so once that download is finished I will then show you how to make the server work okay there we go so here's my minecraft folder where I saved it so using whatever particular zip program you prefer I like 7-zip but they all pretty much work the same so I'm just going to extract it and put it in a new folder it has to be a totally new folder that's got nothing else in it and so there you can see that that is basically everything that's been provided for you so the first thing you need to do is if you have a 32-bit operating system you will need to right click on launch.bat and go edit and then you will need to change these values just here to say 1 gig 1 gig if you have a 32-bit operating system in this particular case I have a 64-bit operating system so I'm going to leave it as 3 gig 2 gig and then you double click on launch.bat and the first time it will run now it's important to note if you get lots of errors here there is a chance that it is because you don't have Java 7 installed so the way to do that is to bring up a new window and type in your search bar I use Google search uh, Java 7 runtime install it's the very first link and it will take you to the page here where you have to accept the licensing agreement and then install it I use the Windows x86 offline and then the Windows 64 offline. Install the Windows x86 first and then install the Windows x64 second. Now it's important to make sure you install both of them because some things will want to use 32-bit and some things will want to use 64-bit and you want to make sure you have both versions of Java 7. It is also critical that you uninstall Java 6 before you start installing Java 7 otherwise things can get all messed up and all screwy and, and nobody wants things to be all messed up and screwy so there we go we can see that now everything has run and if you type help it brings up the full help list for you so that means you know the server has started it's not ready to play yet so what you have to do is type stop now you see it says press any key to continue if you get to the point where it says press any key to continue before it finishes preparing spawn and then comes up creating railcraft save file if it doesn't get to that then you know that there's an issue and generally it's because you either don't have Java 7 installed or you're running a 32-bit operating system and it doesn't come up with the correct memory settings that it can work with the other thing you might get and this happens on some slower computers is uh, system time just skipped is the system overloaded or did the time just change or something like that if you get that message more than once like if you get it a couple of times in a row that normally means your system can't handle running a ticket server or it can't handle the number of players that you have on it but what we'll do now is we'll go to the next step which is you can see it's created a bunch of new files you need to right click on server.properties and most people will have to go open with and then say choose a default program I've previously configured myself so I can do that already so I can just go straight to notepad plus plus or you can use notepad or whatever this is the settings that you have for your server now if you plan on port forwarding leave server IP blank and you need to port forward to whatever IP the server is running on that particular port whatever you configure that to be you can pretty much set that to any value but the default one seems to work the best and seems to have the most compatibility if you're using Hamachi or another program once you have Hamachi up and going you can see the IP that Hamachi gives you 
which in this case is 5223204174. That's the IP that you would type in here. <clears throat> in this particular case, because I'm just doing a demo, I'm not going to change that IP, I'm just going to connect with localhost. But unless you have quite a fast PC, it's a bad idea to run the server on the same system that you're playing the client on. The hard drive just generally just lags out when it's trying to you know, have lots of people doing lots of things and then trying to send it all the information over the net. So basically with these different things, I would suggest turning that world name into something different, something that will be recognizable to you. I almost always put in here allow flight true because sometimes if you don't say allow flight true when people start to fly with like the equivalent exchange rings and things like that it kicks them off the server because it thinks they're cheating. The next thing and this is down to personal preference is whether or not you put a whitelist on the server and I would almost always suggest using online mode true. If you don't use online mode true you can have problems with people connecting and not having their stuff in their equivalent exchange bags and other things like that because it can't correctly verify their username. I almost always also turn PVP to false, but again that's a matter of personal preference. And you get with TechIt, certainly with TechIt 2, I haven't played a lot of TechIt 3 yet, but I think it's much the same, you get around about 5 players per gigabyte of RAM you have. So take that into account when you're running the server. I could probably with the default TechIt configuration which is 3 gig max, probably have around about 15 players on. And then pretty much the rest of it you can leave unless you want to change this MOTD line which basically is what you will see when you put the server information in. So just as an example to show that it works, I'm going to put ticket is cool just to show you that what that changes. So I'll then save this file and close it and I will go back here and I will launch the server again actually what I might just really quickly do just to show you that it did change it is call this tech at 3 world actually I might just get rid of that world because it's going to create a whole lot of folders anyway so just call it tech at 3 so now when I run it again that's a totally optional setup for you you can call it whatever you feel like calling it in this particular case I'm going to call it tech at 3 and you can see now it's once again preparing spawn because in the background it is now creating those files ticket 3, ticket 3, nether and ticket 3 the end so once this is up and going there we go creating railcraft save file that means I know that it's worked I will then jump back to my minecraft folder and run the technic launcher and the technic launcher is downloaded Mm, it used to have it on the ticket page but I guess it doesn't anymore there you go it's on the left hand side there so I'm using the EXE because I'm running Windows so double click on Technic Launcher and it'll come up I have pre-selected ticket now because we're now using a ticket 3 server you need to come down to options and you need to make sure that it says 3.03 .03 there best way to do that is normally just to go to manual build selection and then pick it but in this case I had it on always use development build and it picked it automatically when it came up so now the next thing you do once you've done that is you log in and I'll just resize this a little bit so it makes everything a bit clearer once it will let me resize it hopefully this won't take too long there we go so you can see that in the background I do have the server running so if I go to multiplayer now I will go to add a server in this particular case the server address will be local host and this is purely for testing purposes just to show that it's working on this server normally I would not suggest doing this there you go and you can see that tech it is cool has come up showing that it has connected it's showing the IP which is the current local host there's currently no people out of five on there and we're getting good pings so if I now hit join server you can see that it's logging in you can see that on the server page here it says sending service I checked to a stocky and that a stocky has logged in so you now know that everything is working correctly you can see that NEI is working nice and correctly now it's important to note that even though NEI is working and even though it's set to cheat mode 
you can't spawn any items in unless you're an op. So you have to be set to op to be able to spawn items in. You also have to be set to op to be able to break things in the vicinity of spawn. So if some of those kind of things happen, you'll see that that's not working, but if I run away over here, I'm far enough away from spawn that I can break things. That's spawn protection. So that's a, that's a default part of Tekkit and you know, it's something that is going to happen. What I can do now is go back to the server and you, again you type help and it gives you the full list of commands but in this case all I want to do is just op a stocky. You can see it now presents a message that says I am now op and I'll have to disconnect from the server and then reconnect because any eye has to update itself to let it know that it's it's now possible and now I can start spawning things in. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Remember the important things are need to install Java 7. Before installing Java 7 remove Java 6. Can't express enough how many people have problems because they don't correctly remove Java 6 before installing Java 7. Second thing if you're using a 32-bit OS or you get an error that says unable to create virtual machine, insufficient heap size or you know, something to the effect of that you need to change those memory sizes. I suggest going for 1 gig, 1 gig. It's important to make sure the XMX value is always bigger than the XMS value otherwise you'll get a, a incorrect heap size error or something like that. But basically what you need to do is make sure that you reduce those values to a value that will work with your system and that's totally dependent on A, your operating system, whether it's 32 or 64 bit, and B, how much free memory you have. If I go start task manager and show you my free memory, you'll see that I'm currently using 3.74 gig, so I've got you know more than two gigabytes free, so I've got plenty of RAM to be able to run the server at th the three gig setting that it comes with by default, and also run the client as well, but you need to be careful that if you don't, you can get some errors or you can get some weird things kind of glitching out and happening. So I hope this tutorial has been really helpful. If there's a problem that you have when you're trying to get this to work or you're trying to do something a little bit different and it's not quite working for you, please post a comment in this video and I'll endeavor to help you out as quick as I can. So thanks very much for watching. A stocky out.